Hi, my name is Vince Sheehan. I'd like to talk today about um, sonata form, and I'd like to use biscuits to help me explain this. Um, sonata form is probably the most important musical form you need to understand if you want to listen to classical music and truly appreciate it and follow how it goes. Because sonata form is a musical structure which is used in countless symphonies, concertos, uh, chamber music, piano sonatas, violin sonatas, you can even find it in opera sometimes. Sonata form is absolutely everywhere if you listen to music from the uh, 18th all the way into the 20th century. It really is that important. And whatever piece you listen to, there's more than likely going to be at least one movement in sonata form. So, how does it work? So, first of all, sonata form is based on the principle of two contrasting themes or two contrasting groups of themes or groups of melodies. Um, and we have what we call the first subject. I'm going to call, I'm just going to put first there like that. And the first subject is going to be represented by this bourbon here. And the first subject is the melody which kicks off our sonata form movement. Okay, in Beethoven's Fifth, which is probably the most famous symphony ever written, it's da 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 da. That's the first subject. Okay. In contrast to the first subject, we have the second subject, and the second subject um, is different in character usually to the first subject. So if the first subject's stormy or agitated or it's uh, boisterous or it. Whatever it might be, the second subject is quite often more peaceful, uh, calm, more relaxed. So in Beethoven's uh, Fifth Symphony, the second subject goes da 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 da. It's a lot calmer. It's a lot more gentle. And importantly, also the second subject is always in a different key, usually the dominant or if it's in a minor key, like Beethoven's Fifth, the relative major. So I'm going to stick that here. Okay, a bit higher because it's in a different key. But it's different in character because a custard cream is not like a bourbon, other than being a biscuit. Okay, and in between the first and second subjects, we usually have a short passage um, which links the two. So there isn't this um, big gap between the first and second subjects. And that's just simply called a transition. And the transition is usually based on the first subject. So I'm going to make that a little bit of a bourbon there. So transition. Okay. Then we have, after the second subject, we have a little bit of music to bring this section of the symphonic movement to an end. And we call that a codetta. The codetta is usually just um, a little bit of music based again on the first subject to round this section off. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, a bourbon again and I'm going to stick it here because actually although it's still based on the first subject it's in the second subject's key. Okay so I'm going to put that here, codetta. Okay and this section, this whole section is called the exposition. First subject, second subject, first subject transition, second subject codetta. Okay, next up. Now quite often this is re repeated, okay, particularly in a symphony by Haydn or Mozart or Beethoven, this is repeated. Then we have a develop, then we have the section called the development. And a development is really um, all of the first and second subjects, the transitions, the codettas, mixed up, okay? So, and this is often the most exciting part of a sonata form movement because the themes we have heard already are then kind of experimented with and played with and combined in different ways and rearranged, put in different keys, um, and it's a really great part of any symphonic movement. So we might have a little bit of the first subject here in um, a completely different key, you know, somewhere between here and here. Then we might have a bit of 
The second subject, which we can just stick here, maybe, down here. Now we could have maybe a bit of the first and second subjects combined at the same time. Oh dear. So you might have, I don't know, a bit of, let's get a bit of custard cream here, you know, at the same time. and They're all kind of mixed up and it's a very exciting part of the symphony or the, the sonata form movement. It doesn't have to be a symphonic movement. And then, after the development finishes, we have what's called the recapitulation. And the recapitulation is actually very similar, very similar to the exposition. We have the first subject again in the um, back in the tonic key. So we're back home. We've, it sounds like we've arrived home, so we're back in the home key. So I'm going to put the first subject there, pretty much as it was in the exposition. We might have the transition again, but the transition will be slightly different this time because we're not going to a new key. We're staying in the same key because we're going to have the second subject next in the tonic key. So we don't move it up. It's going to be in the home key, no longer in the dominant or the relative minor. And then we might have the codetta again in the home key. Now this is just a very, um, sorry, this is the order. So exposition goes to the development, the development then goes to the recapitulation down here, okay? Now, this is just a very basic kind of sonata form. You might have an introduction before this even begins with different music, like a Haydn symphony often has a slow introduction at the beginning. You might have a coda right at the end of the symphony, which um, can be of varying lengths, um, but is used in a lot of uh, symphonies. You have a coda at the end. Uh, or piano sonatas, or whatever sonata form movement you're listening to. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it might make you understand the main principles behind sonata form. And have a listen to a sonata form movement, perhaps the first movement of a Haydn or Mozart or Beethoven symphony. And let me know if that, you found that easy to follow. And if not, just stick in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you. Thanks for watching and uh, take care. Bye.